So the first um, mention of a covenant or a promise is in the call of Abraham, which is Genesis 12, 1. And God calls Abraham and he tells him to go forth from your native land and from your father's house to the land that I will show you. So we have the first mention of a promise of land. In Genesis 13, uh, verses 14 to 18, we then have um, an explanation of the land and what type of land and what land God will actually give um, Abraham. And so in Genesis um, 13, raise your eyes and look out from where you are to the north and south to the east and west, for I give all the land that you see to you and your offspring further. God later then goes on to say, I will make your offspring as the dust of the earth, so that if one can count the dust of the earth, then your offspring too can be counted. So we have that idea of the continuation now of the Jewish people. Lastly, um, the land aspect of that Abrahamic covenant um, is fleshed out in Deuteronomy. And basically God does say to Abraham, there to your offspring I assign this land from the river of Egypt to the great river, the river Euphrates. Um, the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Gigashites and the Jebusites are all um, people whose land will now come under uh, the covenant and the covenant promise. Okay, so the second part of the, prom um, the covenant is the promise of descendants. So in Genesis 12, verse 2, we learn that um, God will make Abraham a great nation. And we know from Genesis and from Genesis um, chapter 12 that Abraham, as he was called then, was 75 years old. He was childless. He didn't have children. And children were the one way to be remembered and to pass on your name and your land. And Abraham didn't have any children and didn't seem likely that he was going to have any children. So in Genesis 17, 6, God um, extends that promise of descendants by saying, I will make you exceedingly fertile and make nations of you and kings shall come forth from you. So we have that start of that idea of kingship and that's then um, exemplified in 2 Samuel where we have this idea of the Davidic throne. So if we look at um, 2 Samuel, basically God's talking about how God will put a king onto the throne. It will be of the line of David and that king will basically... Um, be famous, he will be important, he will build a house. We later learn that this is the temple to God. And it's all based on this idea of descendants. Okay, so in um, Genesis 12, 3, we have the mention of blessings. And God promises to bless Abraham, the families of the earth, through him. We learn in Genesis 12, 2, I will bless you, I will make your name great, and you shall be a blessing. And I will bless those who bless you and curse those that curse you. And all the families of the earth shall bless themselves by you. So we have this start, or this beginning of a relationship between God and Abraham, then God and the Jewish people, in that this is going to be a personal God, a God that will look after them and a God that will protect them from their enemies. So if they um, have someone who wrongs them, God will actually punish that person because he is a personal God. Then we have in Jeremiah 31 this idea of the new covenant. And this is also, again, um, explained. It's um, amplified in terms of God is going to be a personal God. We have um, in verse 33, I will be their God and they shall be my people. I will forgive their iniquities and remember their sins no more. So this idea of God having a relationship it is about the forgiveness of sin. It is about promises and about looking after the chosen people. Okay, in Genesis 26, verse 3 to 4, we have a very personal um, idea of God and of God's unconditional love and his relationship through the use of I will. So I will assign all these lands to you and to your heirs, for doing the oath that I swore to your father Abraham. Then in Genesis 28, we have again this idea of God being with them, with your descendants shall be as the dust of the earth. Um, remember, I am with you. That's verse 15. I will protect you wherever you go and bring you back to this land. I will not leave you till I have done what I have promised you. Okay, so lastly, um, the covenant is further confirmed um, to Jacob. And in Genesis 30, um Five, we have you whose name is Jacob you shall be called Jacob no more but Israel shall be your name 
and thus God, or he, names him Israel. So this idea that Jacob changes his name, he confirms the covenant, and God also bestows on him a symbol that shows that he has made a covenant um, with Jacob and then with the 12 tribes of um, Israel, which are the 12 sons of Jacob. And that's where we have that link between the Israelites today and Jacob and then his father Isaac and his grandfather Abraham. So three parts of the covenant. It all starts off in Genesis 12 verses 1 to roughly 4. The promise of land, the promise of descendants and the promise of blessings. Learn it.